Well, here's some comments that Trev Alberts had regarding Matt Rule so far in the coaching staff. He says, quote, it's been fun to watch this staff work. It's been a challenge. When I say challenge, that's the wrong word. It's been great for our administrative staff as well. This coaching staff is a group of workers. They're passionate. They've got a vision. They push, and they're leading the way culturally in terms of work ethic within our department. I think that's really important. It all starts at the top. It starts with Coach Matt Rule. It's just been wonderful. He said also, uh, let me tell you something. He's far surpassed my expectations in terms of work pace. Man, it's been great to watch. He's working hard. Honeymoon phase is fully in play with Matt Rule and staff. Right, Sam? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's working hard. (laughs) I mean, that's that's kind of what you do this this yeah, this uh, no matter where you're going, not, again, not talking about this particular case, but everyone that came in new this year, wherever they're at, always has great energy, great start to think that what's going on. You have everyone has that's been hired has a very good vision in place with what they want to be able to get done. And there is always a honeymoon phase for everyone that's yeah. uh, that, that that's coming Absolutely. in. So so Absolutely. everything that uh, uh, that uh, Trev said on that sounds you know 100 percent accurate. And uh, the little bit that I know about what you see from afar. Uh, adds up because obviously the staff's doing a great job. Yeah, I mean they signed a lot of kids. I mean they brought in a lot of kids, so that's a lot of hard work. Yeah, they're busy. They're moving out there. Uh, and and he's been talking with with Tom Osborne and Frank Solich a little bit in regularity so far. Good guys to get talk to talk to. Yeah, I mean they won a lot of game. I mean Frank was fifty eight and nineteen. They did a great job. I'm very fortunate, obviously. I, I still keep in touch with uh, with both of them, uh, probably with Coach Osborne more. But uh, you know, Coach Solich was always just such a huge part of my uh, career. Starting at that, I actually started uh, with. I started my first my first spring ball right. was I was coaching right. offense uh, with Coach Solich and coaching the running back. So what year? At that, what year was that? Oh, probably about ninety one, I believe it was, until I got moved over to defense and in, in the next time. And so it was uh, it was remarkable, and he was so. So great and so patient to work with. But one story I could remember is grading film from Saturday scrimmages because we had so many players and there were so many reps. It would go on like forever. And then the next day to grade all those were, was a lot. And and Coach Solich, Frank, would sit down with me and we would do every single snap together. And there'd be, I mean, there'd be like 14 fullbacks that got reps. Wow. You know, tailbacks and all. And then there's and a lot of times, usually there's always two backs in the backfield. But the roster was bigger. But he spent so much time, and he'd always. I remember him always asking me, "What do you have here? What do you have here? What's your grade?" Before, so I wasn't just agreeing with him. Yeah, he'd always make you talk and speak and be able to do that. So, uh, Coach Solich is a huge part of uh, of how I got a chance to develop and and figure out how things actually work at this level. And uh, obviously, he's done a great job, and and uh, just a big friend of mine, and and just I say a huge mentor of mine. Sweet. Uh, I've always been curious because right now. Again, everything is peachy before the season plays out. It, it, you really can't, if you're Matt Rule, you really can't lose until August, September because everything's positive. When you have a new coach, I mean Scott Fr- Scott Frost, even his first year ago, he starts off zero and six, but he ends up this he ends the season four and two. So his honeymoon phase is still going on because they're preseason ranked in the top twenty five after a four and eight season, which is <coughs> frankly still incredible. They were preseason ranked, didn't go out. Didn't go well for Nebraska. He would go five and seven in 2019. But in your experience, you know, how long does a honeymoon phase last? It, it, for, it's the for, same thing we talked about with basketball a little bit on how things look. I think that's a big part of it. So you, when you see things, oh, yeah. how does it look on the field? When you just watch it and you go to a practice, when you watch the game, um, I used to always use a term and there was an explicitive in there, but that would, I, would, I used to always say blanks on TV and they're keeping score. Oh, yeah. That, that's yeah. when it matters. Just don't forget that. Is that when 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 it's on TV and they're keeping score, that's different than it is on a Saturday scrimmage. Yep. That everything's everything's judged at a different level and it's judged nationally. But they said you have it. It all matters on how things look, what the perspective is. I would imagine uh, at Nebraska fan base wise, I'm just throwing this out that the, the, the honeymoon for everyone from here and out is probably a little shorter. And that would just be because there hasn't been a very good run of football, and people want good football fast. Yeah. So I think. Just with that to happen uh, in, in a little bit faster, and that's for any place. If, they're, if, they, if things look good with where they're at, and I also think it matters with what you're coming into. Sip, you hit on the other day. There's a lot of players back that played yeah, a lot of football, and so that gives you a better chance. If you're if you're in a, a, a mode of 
where you're coming into a place in the and it's like we've lost nine starters on offense and we've lost 10 starters on defense and everyone in is brand new. I think your honeymoon goes a little bit longer. Uh, like that. So what, what are you walking into? If all of a sudden you're taking okay. over, taking over a job of like when uh, Lanning went to Oregon, like Dan Lanning, yeah. yeah, honeymoon's probably not as long there right. just because of they had good players. They added to it. So that's how you look at things in my opinion. Well, yeah, it is kind of a tricky conversation because, because it seems like people, regard this as like a roster flip i don't know i don't know what to think i know but the like, phase is it, that, that that's a real phase and everything's very, very you know for every every new staff right now oh yeah that's what's going on they're they're they're, they're going to get the benefits of what what's happening with what's going on so uh I, th- I think right now you just look at it from the fan base as being you know obviously extremely pleased with, with what they see Anytime there's new players coming into a yeah. roster, oh, yeah. there's always hope. That's so why I think they always want hope. So I imagine that that always also helps you with that with the commitment and with, the, with everything that's going on. Because every time there's a new player coming in, you're like, how good is this guy? What right. can he do for us? All those things. They're, they're, they have it's a all lot going of, on right now. They have a lot of new players coming in. So the fan base is reading about a lot of new players, which they are across the country from every place that they're yeah. at. Yeah, I mean, for, for sure, for Nebraska, a lot of faces come, a lot of new faces, a lot of old faces still here at the program. But – I mean, it when Nebraska goes out to Minnesota in late August for a Thursday night game, and they go to Colorado. I mean, the lights are bright. It's everything that's been positive and everything that's been shiny. Nebraska fans still expect to win those football games. Do I mean, they though? I think they do. Yeah, I think Nebraska fans. I would think tell you. some do, some don't. No, it's a well. Time right Nebraska now. will likely be, you know, an underdog going out to to Minnesota. Well, and sure, I think Colorado. Yeah. They we'll see about that, but. It, you just kind of lose you lose where you're at in terms of the staff when the games get played because you just want to win and it's hard to um it's hard to sometimes calm yourselves as a fan and say you know this this we need patience we've been patient for a long time but patience is still important every day every game it is important to have to have patience with what's going on with there. there's a lot of installing going on there's a lot of things but the one thing that changes a bunch with the new staff compared to maybe 20 years ago is the amount of time you get to spend with your players in the off season where before it was just, you couldn't, you know, with the amount of time you get for meeting time, there's walkthrough time, your players are around the office all the time. You do have a chance to get caught up a lot faster because in general, like in the example, they're in the building all the time. If you're in the NFL, when your season ended was like January 15th, somewhere in that area, if you didn't make the playoff somewhere in that, I mean, the eighth, ninth, whatever it is, when they're out of the building, they're not back in the building until next may so they're not in there there's where football your day so there's different ways to be able to and also with electronics the way it's like hey uh, take a look at these 12 plays this is the install of this defense like that we'd always we'd be doing things i would send screenshots to my players at, at the, say at lsu it'd be february and then screenshots to be able to get back to me or we had a walk really? through there or anything or, or a practice that was filmed our guys had to grade themselves and they'd send their grades back in that night by themselves before you got to the next thing because so there's there's a there you're so much more advanced than what you were 20 years ago with what you can do to teach uh young men and then these guys will be around every place they're around the office much more so it does help you go move faster into a new staff into new players all those things going with it why are they in the office more well, they're in the office more just because because you, the availability of what you can actually legally do with them. Oh yeah. So the you actually before you could didn't have the two hour time frame of when you can meet with them. You can divide that out. There's always walk through time that you can do on the field with them pr- prior to spring ball. Those rules didn't exist back when I first got in the game. Oh, okay. And so, as to be honest with you, back in if you just went back in, into the '90s, whatever, and and you couldn't have four guys sitting in your office watching film with them. Yeah. which is kind of crazy. And and now it's like, well, why can we not do that? And because that's what they're there for. And the kids enjoy it. And, you know, and I say kids, young men enjoy it. So that's part of the, that's a little bit of a change up. Yeah. Um, four, six, four, five, six, eight, five. Call any questions for coach push, please call or text in. Um, Kent says in the text line, and again, this is, this is honeymoon talk here in terms of next year. He's like, guys, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I expect Nebraska to come home. Oh, and two next year Whoa. for their, first home game why is that because you got fans that are beaten down still i mean they they might be optimistic about this and they still might 
believe this could be great, but they see Matt Rule's first couple of year, first years at Temple and Baylor were not very good. Yeah. Now, again, I think it's a different situation in terms of what he's walking into with the players left over, the guys he's bringing in. It feels like it's different to me, but you still have fans that have just they have they've had expectations, they've been beaten down, and they have to overcome that and say, you know what? Until they do it, I'm not going to expect it, and it's hard to get past that for fans. It is hard, you know. I, the the what, what Coach Rule did at Baylor, I just you know viewed that from afar, so I wasn't, I have no inside knowledge of that. But that situation would be much tougher than what he has right now. What he walked into so? at Baylor would be, he would was mostly oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of crazy. Even even yeah. double back on that right. one. So, yeah, that, there was a lot going on down there. Yeah, there yeah, then he had to take over and go through a lot of stuff. So a little bit different. Also, yeah, the one thing I can speak for that's the truth, though, there's not it's not a beat down team. That, that team's not beat down. They're 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 they're, they're, they're you saw how they kept playing, kept going. I know. You, you have a bunch of really good guys on the, on that team. So it's not a it's they're not walking in the door. Uh, right, that's shoulders a lot of people. Slumped. A lot of people. Like try to... They're 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 big guys and big chest, and that's... they're coming in. So it's not a beat down team. So that will help them. That will help uh, this staff get started off in a fast way. Yeah, a lot of people seem like they try to portray it that way. That it's like that it was a mess. Hmm. You know, it didn't seem like a, it didn't look like a mess to me. There's probably times when you can say that it was that it, it looked that way, but I just like I said, from being around them, that's the only thing I can say from where they were last year when when we were you know on the plane flying back from Iowa, it's not a beat down team. No, uh, oh, that yeah. they're, they'll, okay. There's 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 a lot of a uh, lot of energy in, in the building. Good. And obviously when you bring new people into the building, that also helps a bunch. That creates competition right away when everyone starts coming in and that's just the way life works, man. Bring I mean, I'm all about I'm always every time every time you're recruiting, you just you almost tell your players like, you know, what's your number one goal in recruiting, you know, to whoever I'm talking to, I'm like, I'm to replace you. Wow. You know, you're trying to you're that's trying hard. to out recruit your current players every time out, and it's mm-hmm. not that's just the way it is. You're trying to get better players all the time in the competition uh, to be able to do that. 